Hey, good morning, uh, all you beer lovers out there in the uh, United States and worldwide through the reach of YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, social media in general. Good morning. It's Thursday, September 2nd. Finally, man, this morning was about 57 degrees outside. So here in central Pennsylvania, we had the outskirts of Ida, Hurricane Ida come through yesterday and last night. And it coincided with a, uh, a guy coming into town who uh, runs the website Brewery Travels. Um, and he had scheduled this obviously a while back and had hotel rooms and his family were in town. And he had tweeted me a couple days ago, tweeted message me and said, hey, do you want to get together at Trogues in, uh, in Hershey? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, floods are coming, man. Hershey floods out, man, a couple, a couple years ago. I think Zoo America was underwater, but I think Hershey took some steps to remediate that. So I decided to drive up to Trogues yesterday, and I, I knew I was taking a bit of a risk. Uh, you know, I was kind of in the front part of the storm, but I also knew I was I was not going to just turn around and come right back. I was going to be there for a while. Um, and it was an interesting drive back home. It wasn't dangerous, but it was interesting. And let's put it this way. There's no bird shit on my car at this point. It's been blasted off by the rains. Uh, so it's been an odd summer, very volatile, very hot, very humid. And then we have these just monster storms and Hurricane Ida is just one example of it. So I met up with him yesterday. Uh, one of the advantages of visiting like a brewery on site is like if they sell beer at their location to go, which like a crowler or a growler or six packs or bottles or whatever. Uh, you can often get your hands on stuff that you just can't get at a distributor because uh, there's just no economies of scale at a distributor to try to sell that stuff. It's just going to sit around sometimes. Uh, so I enjoyed a, uh, what did I have at the bar? I had a, a, a Doppelbach, the Trogonator. That's really super great um, uh, Doppelbach if you like Doppelbachs. It's really good. It's like kind of a equivalent of a high alcohol uh, lager. It's made for um, box season. So I had one of those. I came in a 16 ounce glass that was super cool looking. Um, I had a Nimble Giant, which is just one of my favorite double IPAs out there. And then I stopped because I had to drive home. I'm like, heck no, I'm not drinking a third beer. I had two pretty high alcohol beers, but I did buy some beer to go. So Brewery Travels, he has a, a Twitter account. He has a, uh, a website. This dude is on top of it. He's an educated guy. Uh, so he runs a pretty sharp a website and operation. He has all the technical tools and things to do that well. So let me show you what I bought yesterday. This is going to be a little bit of footage that's going to be live. So please pardon the uh, whoa, the uh, the faltering here. So this is what I got yesterday. Dun 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 dun. So this is a double IPA, right? Oh, excuse me, a double um, a double Belgian. Pardon. That's a that's a double uh, Belgian. Belgian double and this is my favorite the nimble giant because I'm pretty nimble for a guy that's 280 and six foot eight and 58 years old I am a nimble giant myself but not so nimble after drinking that stuff so the beer culture is pretty great it's a pretty exciting thing to run into somebody that has more passions this guy has visited the guy's name is Joel He's from the Midwest, and his wife is a visiting nurse, so they have some flexibility in terms of travel, in terms of jobs. He's going to settle down pretty soon because he has a second, a second child here. Uh, but he's been able to travel up until now. 700 craft breweries. Boy, and the guy's just under 30. I mean, he makes me look like a piker. I've probably been to 250 craft breweries, I'd say. I don't keep track of it. But, um, yeah, this guy's under 30 years old. He's got a bright future in front of him, for sure. Uh, so risk taking yesterday was a risk. It was a risk to roll the dice. It was a risk to go up to Hershey. It was a risk driving back home. Could be also called kind of stupid, you know. But fortunately, I gauged it properly and got home and was surfing on the way home, and it was a little exciting. But know your limits. Know what you're capable of. You know, don't have that third beer if you got to drive. Uh, you know, there's always time to drink it when you get home if you if you want to drink it. And so I came home and I made some made some uh, made some food. Uh, I made some other things that I needed to make, and then I settled down and had a another beer plus a Yangling flight to finish up, which is a uh, equivalent of like Michelob Ultra. 
So if you like really low carb beers, it's decent. It's all right. I call it like a beer seltzer. It's nothing special, but it's all right. So I drank that just as a nightcap, and after that, I just don't want to drink anymore. So you have to take risks, and the craft beer industry and the craft beer enthusiasts out there, we're risk takers a bit. We like to do things that are a little bit edgy, and yesterday was an example of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, don't don't sit back. Take, take, take some chances. Be intelligent about it. Know your limits. Uh, know what you're capable of. Know your 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 parameters, but then take some risk. That's a good thing. So I think that's all I have to say for this uh, fine morning here in Central Pennsylvania, Beer Kergar Beer Kergar World World Headquarters. Signing off.